Namaskar. Welcome to the learning series on food technology. In today's lecture series, we are going to deal with the current strategies in the production of eggs, meat, fish and poultry. By the end of this session, you will be able to learn and understand the following concepts. The types of poultry practice, production of eggs, production of meat, production of fish and the production of poultry. Now firstly, coming to the introduction and types of poultry practice. Poultry enterprises may vary from basic backyard poultry practiced in many homes in the rural areas to keeping of mechanized and automated production plants. The various aspects of poultry production include production of eggs, meat that is from goats, cows etc, fish and then poultry that is chicken. The different types of poultry enterprises include backyard poultry production, farm flock production, commercial poultry, specialized egg production, integrated egg production etc to name a few. Now first let's talk about egg production. Egg production is basically of two types. First is the specialized egg production which consists of separation of poultry for meat and egg production. In the egg producing plant, specialized employees oversee specific aspects related to egg production. And the second type is the integrated egg production. This is the most advanced enterprise and involves the complete mechanization and automation of the egg production cycle including battery egg laying, temperature controls, scientific feeding and mechanized egg collection methods. Factors affecting egg production Typically, the production cycle of a layer lasts just over a year that is for a period of 52 to 56 weeks. During this period, several factors are known to influence the production of eggs. It is hence important that the cycle must be managed effectively and efficiently in order to obtain the maximum output and profit. The following are the factors which majorly influence egg production. First is the breed. The breed of the laying bird influences egg production. Management and feeding given to the birds however go a long way in determining the features of egg production. Second is mortality rate. Mortality rate may increase due to the onset of diseases, predation and even high temperature. The mortality rate of small chicks is about 4% and that of growers is about 15% and that of layers is about 12%. Third is the management factors. Effective and eminent management skills are necessary in order to increase the productivity of the eggs. Egg production cycle. Birds usually start laying eggs at around 5 months that is 20 to 21 weeks of age and they continue to lay for a period of 12 months that is 52 weeks. They lay fewer eggs as they near the moulting period. The typical egg production cycle lasts about 17 weeks. It involves several distinct phases such as phase 1, small chicks or brooders. This phase lasts from 0 to 2 months that is 0 to 8 weeks during which small chicks are kept in facilities also known as brooder houses. They are kept separately from the laying birds. Phase 2 Growers This particular phase lasts for a period of 3 months. It occurs from the 9th to the 20th week of age. Growers may either be housed separately from small chicks or continue to be reared in brooder come grower houses. It is important to provide appropriate care to the growers, particularly between 17th and 20th week of age as their reproductive organs develop during this period. Phase 3 Layers Growers are transferred from the grower house to the layer house when they are 18 weeks old and to prepare for the laying cycle. Birds typically begin to lay for a period of 12 months starting when they are about 21 weeks old 
and lasting until they are about 72 weeks old. Production planning. On an average, a bird tends to produce one egg per day. Also, not all birds start to lay exactly when they are 21 weeks of age. Planning is therefore necessary for egg production to be constant so as to cater to the market demand. In areas where the climate is hot and humid, commercial hybrid laying birds produce on an average between 180 to 200 eggs per year. In temperate climates, birds can produce about 250 to 300 eggs per year. Egg production rises rapidly and then begins to fall after 31 weeks of age. When less than 65% of the flock are laying eggs, it becomes uneconomical to retain birds. Feed costs and sales of culled birds for meat must be considered along with prices of eggs. In some cases, when egg prices are high, it may be viable to delay the culling of birds until only 45% of the flock is laying eggs. Now next let us talk about meat production. Meat mainly includes beef, pork and sheep meat. Production of beef. Beef cattle production is a strong industry within the United States and also throughout the world. As beef cattle graze forages in the open range and also in pasture lands, they serve a unique role in providing with high quality protein for human consumption. Production phases. First is the feeding beef cattle. Beef cattle, just like other ruminants, possess a digestive system which is multi-compartmentalized that can digest fibrous materials easily. Beef cattle consume feeds that range from high quality cereal grains such as corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, sorghum, etc. called concentrates to high and low quality fibrous feeds such as legumes, hay, grass, coastal bermuda, etc. It is because of the consumption of such high fibrous feed sources and by products, beef cattle provide a high quality value added protein source for humans from lower quality feed resources. Now next the housing. Housing systems for beef cattle in confinement feed lots vary. This depends on the climate, topography, etc. They include total confinement buildings, open sheds and lots or open lots with windbreaks or shades. Beef cattle are hearty animals that tolerate a wide range of climatic conditions. Most buildings have open sidewalls and are naturally ventilated. Production of pork. Before the 1960s, most pork in the United States of America was raised in outside lots or on pasture systems. With the development of slotted floors and liquid manure handling equipment, it has become possible for producers to more easily care for a larger number of animals. Enclosed buildings overcame most weather problems, predators and has also minimized the potential pollution from outside lot runoff. It has also now become practical to farrow sows twice a year rather than doing it just once. This marked the beginning of intensive production schedules on relatively small areas as found throughout the world today. Pork production is an important component of the American agriculture and an important part of the American diet and way of life elsewhere also. 74,789 farms had pig sales in 2007 with major part of the production concentrated in the Corn Belt states and in North Carolina. In 2012, there were 60,200 hog and pig operations. Modern pork production is mostly done in enclosed buildings to protect animals from the weather and also from predators and also to minimize the spread of diseases. While larger operations naturally enable the farmers to significantly increase the efficiency of production by making use of less labor, it has on the other hand resulted in environmental challenges with larger amounts of manure being concentrated in a small area. Most swine today, 
are raised in all-in, all-out, that is AIAO systems, where each room or building is completely emptied and sanitized between groups of pigs. Each new group of pigs enters a freshly disinfected area and stays there for this phase of their life. The facility has a separate room for each group of pigs weaned. AIAO animals in each room are of a uniform age and size and are isolated from the rest to the maximal extent possible in order to decrease the possibility of spreading of diseases from older animals to the younger ones. The main advantage is that disease spread can be better controlled. Also, animals are less stressed because they are housed with same age animals. Also, complete cleaning and disinfecting between groups is possible. The disadvantage is that space is less efficiently allocated and that more space may be needed to allow rooms to be empty for cleaning between groups. Until around 1960, Swine production systems were usually housed on a single site, majorly because of labor savings and convenience. Health concerns have since then caused several swine operations to house the various production phases at different sites to further minimize contact between pigs of different ages. This is either a two-site or a three-site system. A two-site system has breeding and gestation at one site and farrowing or nursery and grow finish pigs at a separate site. While in the case of a three-site system, nursery is also placed at a separate site. In the last couple of years, some producers have constructed wean to finish barns where pigs go immediately after weaning and stay there until they reach the market. This system combines the nursery and grow to finish phases of production. These barns provide substantially more space per pig than is needed initially, but provides the advantage of only moving pigs once during their lifetime. This reduces stress on the animals and saves labor since buildings are not cleaned until the hogs are marketed. Now let us come to the production of fish. The marine fish landings in India were estimated at 2.64 million tons. There has been a consistent rise in production of fish year by year owing to the enhanced catches of sharks, oil sardines, Bombay duck, ribbon fishes, carangids, seal fishes, tunas, panade prawns and cephalopods. Purchase and non panade prawns have shown a decrease in landings. The mechanized sector accounts for 67%, motorized sector 25% and artisanal sector 7% of the production. The northwest coast accounted for 0.908 million tons followed by southwest coast at 0.86 tons, southeast 0.611 million tons and northeast at 0.227 million tons. Monitoring of environmental characteristics of coastal water continues throughout the year. Culture fisheries Freshwater aquaculture The giant prawn, popularly known as campi, is migratory and completes its life cycle in both freshwater as well as in seawater. Seed production of this prawn species has been successfully done in freshwater prawn, that is, Macro Brachium Rosenbergi by making use of underground saline water with necessary ionic amendments at Rohtak in Haryana. Haryana, Rajasthan, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh have large areas of inland saline groundwater reserves and hence this practice is expected to provide a major boost to prawn culture programs of landlocked areas. Now next coming to the breeding of peninsular carps. Seven sets of labio fimbriatus have been bred successfully using a portable hatchery at Bangalore, Karnataka. More than 0.1 million spawn were obtained. Subadults and fingerlings of Puncius pulchellus have been collected from the Western Ghats region and are being cultured under captivity and given artificial feed. 
in vitro culture of freshwater pearl mussel. Primary in vitro cell culture of nacre secreting pallial mantle epithelial tissue explants of freshwater pearl mussel that is lamellidens marginalis has been carried out successfully. Now talking about cold water fisheries, Masir Conservation Initiative at Kumaon. A natural lake, Shamlatal, in Kumaon region was developed as a conservation site to breed the threatened Masir species, scientifically termed Tor Putitora. Masir fingerlings that have been stocked for the first time have established themselves very well in the lake with 98% return in experimental netting. This will also help in promoting tourism in Shamtal Lake area. Advanced maturation and breeding of exotic carps at high altitudes. The drawback in the breeding of grass carp and silver carp at high altitudes was due to the water temperature which affects maturation and embryonic development. From the experimental data, it was evident that the maturity inducing hormone treatment with HCG at 250 to 300 IU and pituitary extract plus overprim in 3 to 1 ratio at 3 ml per kg coupled with insulation against low temperature by polyhouse covering of ponds was effective enough in advancing the maturity inducing hormones and raising water temperature through polyhouse insulation at high altitude regions. Brackish water aquaculture Demonstration of shrimp feed technology to the coastal farmers Shrimp feed which is developed by the CIBA has been tested with success at a farmer's pond in Kalpakkam near Chennai. The 0.52 hectare area of the pond was stocked with tiger shrimp Paneus monodon seed and the farmer used CIBA shrimp feed during the culture. After 137 days of culture, the farmer harvested a good 1665 kgs of shrimp. Latex agglutination kit for the detection of white spot virus. Latex agglutination kit for the detection of white spot virus in shrimps has been developed. This is an on-farm test with the aid of the rapid diagnostic kit which can be completed within 3 to 4 minutes. Latex agglutination kit along with the ELISA and DOT ELISA kits for the detection of pathogenic bacteria such as Pseudomonas fluorescens, Aeromonas hydrophila, Vibrio alginolyticus and Edwardsiella tarda of fish were commercialized. Wound healing, anti-neoplastic and antioxidant compounds from two marine crinotoxic fishes. Crude mucus extract of Aries dusumeri and Osteogenoiosis militaris exhibited toxicity when tested on mice. The crude mucus extract of dusumeri showed the highest toxicity at 0.30 ml and the mice died in 50 minutes whereas in case of O militaris the toxic dose was 0.50 ml which caused mortality in 80 minutes. Hemolytic assay conducted against chicken erythrocytes showed that the crude mucus extracts and partially purified fractions of both the fissures was hemolytic as well as odematic activity. Immune index of tiger shrimp. Immune index has been developed to assess the health status of tiger shrimp Paneus monodon based on the characteristics of its hemolymph. There was considerable variation in the hemocyte count of the normal shrimps. During white spot syndrome virus that is WSSV infection, the hemocyte counts dropped drastically. These observations have practical implication in the maintenance of broodstock. Mariculture, maturation, spawning and larval rearing of groupers. Induced maturation of groupers by hormone injection using LHRHA has been conducted at Mandapam. Natural spawning of Epinephilus tovina and Epinephilus polyficadion was observed under captive conditions. Fish harvest and processing technology. 
A novel design of a 15.5 meter OAL 125 HP steel fishing vessel named Siftik 1 with split level deck has been constructed for trawling, gill netting and lining. A simple technique has been developed in order to decrease the chemical hazard caused by benzopyrene in hot smoked fishery products, particularly in tuna. This product consists of calcium and phosphate in 2 is to 1 proportion, which is an ideal requirement for human consumption. This was actually obtained when tuna bones were hydrolyzed enzymatically. Now next coming to poultry production. Poultry production forms an integral and diverse component of agriculture in many parts of the world. In the year 2007, nearly 145,615 farms were producing poultry and poultry products. While broiler chicken production is concentrated primarily in the southern and southeastern United States, turkey production occurs in the corn belt and in parts of North Carolina. Modern poultry production occurs primarily in enclosed buildings to protect the birds from any weather harshness, predators and to reduce the spread of diseases from wild birds. This has enabled farmers to increase production efficiency while significantly bringing down the number of labor required. Augmenting the production of chickens is an important objective in helping to meet the nutritional needs of the ever-growing populations in these developing nations. These chickens tend to be prolific, easy to raise and their output can be generally expanded more rapidly and easily when compared to that of other livestock. Furthermore, they are adaptable to various climates and altitudes. Poultry raising can also be combined with other types of farming and enables the possibility to generate extra revenue to the farmers. Poultry enterprise is basically of two types. First is the backyard poultry. It is the production at the subsistence level of farming. Birds live free range and hatch their own eggs. Their diet is usually supplemented with crop waste and leftovers of food. The labor involved with the backyard poultry production is part-time. Now the next type is farm flock production. This type of production is much more specialized. Here eggs are hatched in a separate location where the hatch and sexing of the birds are controlled. Next is commercial poultry farm. It involves full-time labor and is geared towards producing on a sufficient scale for the sale of both eggs as well as poultry meat. Now finally, coming to the summary. Poultry enterprises may vary from basic backyard poultry practiced in many homes in the rural areas to keeping of mechanized and automated production plants. The various aspects of poultry production include production of eggs, meat such as goats and cows, fish and then poultry that is chicken. The different types of poultry enterprises include backyard poultry production, farm flock production, commercial poultry, specialized egg production and integrated egg production etc. We also learnt about egg production. We studied that egg production is basically of two types that is specialized egg production and integrated egg production. We dealt with the factors affecting egg production and studied that typically the production cycle of a layer lasts just over a year. During this period, Several factors are known to influence the production of eggs. It is hence important that the cycle must be managed effectively and efficiently in order to obtain the maximum output and profit. We also learnt in depth about the various aspects of meat production that is beef and pork, the various aspects of fish production and lastly about poultry production. Thank you.